I'm Lance Lysowski, the Sabres beat writer for the Buffalo News, coming to you on Monday, May 13th, with news, hockey news, involving the Sabres while the Stanley Cup playoffs are going on. And to no one's surprise, or at least those who have been paying attention to the tea leaves <laughs> surrounding the Sabres coaching situation, Rochester Americans head coach Seth Appert was promoted today to the Sabres coaching staff as an assistant coach under Lindy Ruff. The news comes only a few days after the Amherst season ended with a Game 5 loss to the Syracuse Crunch in the North Division semifinal. This, the writing was on the wall. We heard Kevin Adams' comments the day that Don Granato was fired. I asked Adams during the press conference that afternoon about Seth Appert's future and whether he would be a candidate for the NHL coaching staff, given the fact that Buffalo wanted to go out and hire somebody to replace Granado with NHL head coaching experience, which of course Appert does not have. Adams didn't say anything at the time. He expressed his confidence and his admiration for Appert while really pushing the fact that he wanted Appert to focus on the Amherst playoffs. He thought, and we certainly all thought, based on the talent in Rochester, this season that the Amherst had the potential to have another long playoff run. It did not happen. Uh, unfortunately for them, they have arguably the most difficult division in the American Hockey League. So even though they finished tied for first place at the end of the regular season, they got one heck of a first round matchup in Syracuse and lost in five games. Could have had a 2 nothing series lead, but it all fell apart. They just didn't get enough from the younger guys on that roster. And the older guys, while some of them stepped up, others didn't. And they just relied too much on Levi, and they just had they had too much trouble scoring. Falling behind early in games was a problem, uh, particularly later in that series. It does not does not blemish Appert's accomplishments since arriving in Rochester in 2020. Think about all the players that have developed under Appert. Although we haven't seen a lot of them on the NHL roster quite yet. He had an incredible impact on J.J. Paterka, Jack Quinn. He coached Matias Samuelson in Rochester in the USA Hockey National Team Development Program. Luka and Devin Levi. I mean, Appert was behind the NHL bench for two games this season when Don Granato was ill. And there's also all the times that he spent around the Sabres in training camp. He coached the NHL roster in practices. When it was a split squad, these players know who he is. And although... Appert lacks the NHL experience, the pedigree, quote unquote, of Lindy Ruff. Appert is somebody who can come in and build relationships with players. And he's not there to be a friend, right? That's that's not his role. Although the assistant coach can sometimes be the good cop to the head coach's bad cop. In this case, Appert's a very demanding coach. He's not somebody who's going to try to be friends. He's not going to be somebody who kind of takes it easy on players. I've seen it firsthand, the practices in Rochester, he pushes those players and he pushes them by being demanding, by setting the standard. And I think that he and Ruff, although their backgrounds are vastly different, they do have a lot in common in terms of philosophically, where they see younger players. It's a, it's a perfect fit for the other skills and experience on that NHL coaching staff. Now, Marty Wilford will be back coaching the defense core, did a great job of the penalty kill. And although it's easy to sit here and poke holes in each defenseman's game, ups and downs, it he got a lot out of a very young group. And think about the improvement we saw from somebody like Jacob Bryson from last season to this season, or Rasmus Dahlin's development under Wilford. You think about everybody on this roster, it's guys have taken very significant strides under his tutelage. So that makes sense. Mike Bales back as goalie coach. Not only does he, does he have term left on his contract, but he guided Uko Pekalukan into a breakout season. One of the best seasons by a Sabres goalie in almost a decade, by the way. Over a decade. My apologies. That's significant. That's somebody who will be back working with Lukanen and likely Devin Levi next season. Now, the one surprising layer to all of this is the fact that, as of right now, Lindy Ruff didn't exactly bring in one of his own assistant coaches, which is unusual in the NHL. A head coach usually gets to pick three assistant coaches, and the GM gets a choice of one. And this is a different situation with guys under contract, 
a little bit different here with the goalie coach, the success of the D, but Lindy Ruff, although I know that there were conversations with Seth Happer, this is an organization wide decision to move Seth Happer up. Now, I do think it works perfectly. It, it fits well. It, it is something to keep in mind here in terms of how this staff is built out. I would be curious to hear Ruff's response to that fact. You know, a lot of head coaches in the NHL nowadays wouldn't agree to that type. Well, not a lot, but some would not agree to entering a situation where you don't get to bring your own people. But I will add this. There's really, you look at the past, let's say, six years Ruff has had as an NHL head coach. You look at all the assistants during that time, who would fit? Now, you can make a case for one of his former players to come in and instead of, you know, and replace somebody like Matt Ellis, whether that be Steve Ott, who looks to be staying in St. Louis. We're all going to hear about Michael Pekka, but remember, the only way the Sabres can possibly lure Pekka from the New York Rangers is to give him a promotion. This wouldn't be a promotion. Seth Appert is an assistant coach. He did not get an assistant head coach title. That's still vacant. Nobody's assistant head coach on this coaching staff. Now, the Sabres are not ruling out hiring anybody else. There's still a few months here. They're going to wait and see if anybody emerges who would be a fit. That's the key here, fit. They're not going to go out just to hire anybody. And although Matt Ellis struggled to coach, well, I, his power plays were not effective, particularly his last, we'll say, four, 14 months running that power play, but he's a very good skills coach. Let's not overlook that fact. You go back to the COVID season, I would encourage it. I would encourage anybody to go back and read some of the stories that were written about Ellis's work. He got lauded by everybody in the organization for what he was able to do with not only Tage Thompson and Casey Middlestad, but Will Borgen. Remember, Will Borgen wasn't able to get a spot in the lineup here. He goes to Seattle and he's become a very important player for the Kraken on the back end. A lot of that work that season, the development that he had was through Ellis. So I actually, I know a lot of fans are, are reacting in a certain way to this, to the decision to keep Ellis. He's a good skills coach. So the only reason that you could possibly criticize it, in my opinion, because he's not going to be running the power play, is that you, you just wanted somebody different. You wanted Ruff to be able to bring in his own people, which I understand. That there's a strong argument to be made. And again, I would like to hear what Lindy Ruff has to say. And now... The Sabres are looking for a head coach in Rochester. Who's that going to be? What's their skill set going to look like? How much of a voice is Lindy Ruff going to have there? Is James Patrick somebody who could be a candidate? Former Sabres assistant coach, former defenseman for the organization. Just coach Zach Benson and Matt Savoy in Winnipeg the last three years before this one. And by the way, Savoy is probably going to be in Rochester next year. Somebody to keep in mind, but there's going to be a lot of interest in that job. J.D. Forrest is somebody to possibly keep an eye on. Forrest was a candidate for the opening back in 2020 before it went to Appert. Forrest was just let go by the Pittsburgh Penguins because Kyle Dubas wanted to hire his own people to run Wilkes-Barre. Now, Forrest, not only does he have experience as a player, he played the national team development program, somebody who can run the systems and you can maintain a culture. I think that that's what this organization, Kevin Adams, Lindy Ruff, Seth Happer, everybody, you know, Jason Carmanos, who are going to collaborate on this decision, they are going to prioritize continuity in Rochester. They want to keep that culture that was built that has, especially from a development standpoint, had success. And they need to continue that for, this or for, for the Sabres to achieve their goals longer term because you're looking at players – you know, we could sit here and you could think, oh, well, Yuri Kulik, Issa Krozean, where do these guys fit on the NHL roster? I don't think they fit on the NHL roster next season. And that's a good thing. They, This team is in a spot, finally, where there isn't a guaranteed opening in Buffalo for one of these prospects to take that jump. They're going to have to prove to Lindy Ruff and Kevin Adams that they're going to help you win up there. And as we saw in the Calder Cup playoffs, at this moment, the only prospect I see giving the Sabres a chance to win and, and achieve their goals is Devin Levi. Everybody else should be staying in Rochester learning on, under whoever that head coach is. Now, a lot can happen in the summer for a younger player. I don't want to discount that fact. Now, Yuri Cooley can come in and have a great training camp, but based on what we've seen over the last 81 games between the regular season and playoffs... I don't see anybody down there ready to help. And that includes Ryan Johnson, who had a very, very challenging playoff series and, in my opinion, should be down in Rochester for at least another season. 
to become a more well-rounded defenseman. The expectations have changed. The standards have changed. I know that we can look at natural stat trick and these, you know, Johnson's numbers looked a certain way. You failed the eye test a lot of nights when it came to what you're looking for out of a third pair defenseman. And that's fine. He's 22 years old. He just came out of college. Let him cook in the American League. That's what you have it there for. So I digress. Not to get off topic, but there are a lot of layers to this hire that require analysis. And before we continue, it is important to point out, Appert's going to be coaching the power play. He's going to be working with the forwards. Now, overall, you look at the numbers of the Amherst power plays, not all that impressive, particularly the last two seasons. The middle of the pack last season, 20th in the regular se season this year, they look great in the playoffs. And if you really study the way that they operate down there on the man advantage, you could tell they don't have the personnel that you're looking for. I mean, there were a lot of shifts during the regular season, and even some in the playoffs, where Appert had to use five forwards on his power play because he didn't have a defenseman to run his top unit. He didn't have a defenseman he really trusted to run his second unit. Ryan Johnson doesn't have that role. They lost Kale Clay to the NHL, and he wasn't eligible to come back to the playoffs. Jeremy Davies goes down in the playoffs. Game five, unfortunate injury. So think about... But you look at how they were trying to score... It wasn't predictable. They were doing a lot of backdoor plays. They were doing a lot of different... You look at certain nuances on how they were trying to score and trying to be unpredictable, and that's what the Sabres are going to have to do next season. You can't just keep feeding Tage Thompson the puck. You can't just... You can't be one-dimensional. You know, there are a lot of times this past season that no matter what the look was that the Sabres were trying to go for, whether it's Thompson on the right flank, left flank... You know, him sort of circling up and going to the point. Penalty kills just tried to shut down Thompson and Dahlin and force anybody else to make a play. And too often that didn't happen. Too challenging to do that. So I do like the fit here. And I think that Appert has the strategy, the wherewithal, the hockey sense, the ability to, to deliver a message to an entire group that I, I do think he is a very good fit for improving that group next season despite the raw statistical numbers from Rochester. There's a lot to like there. And you look at the forwards, just think about who's developed in Rochester under Appert. Like this, he, he was a college goalie, but he thinks the game, he understands how to coach elite players. He's done it. He did it at the University of Denver as an assistant for almost a decade. Those are first, second round players. Those are more elite, elite talents. He goes to RPI as a head coach for 11 years. You're not getting elite players. But he developed guys into NHL draft picks. Several of his players at RPI became NHL draft picks. Some are still in pro hockey. You know, some ended up make, making it to the NHL for a cup of coffee or whatnot. So, And then he goes to the USA National Team Development Program where he's around Jack Hughes. He's around Alex Turka, Cole Coffey. Like we could keep going down the list. So you have to understand how to coach those players and be demanding out of them and to really be able to communicate. And it's a very delicate, delicate balance. And that complements Lindy Ruff. Now I know that Ruff did this in New Jersey. He coached Jack Hughes among others, young players who had success under him with the devils, but this is somebody else on the staff who not only already has relationships with your players, but he understands how to connect with people. That is a skill that is overlooked in coaching too often and is why we see some of these, you know, older, you know, experienced guys not get that second shot because they struggled to coach the modern day player. Now, Lindy Ruff isn't in that category, but to add somebody else to the staff to help in that regard, it's going to benefit them greatly. And let's not discount the fact they need to get more out of this young forward group. And it's going to keep getting younger, possibly not necessarily this coming season, because yeah, you look, they're going to reshape the bottom six. Is there really a spot for somebody like Kulika Rosane to come up? I don't think so, but anything can happen. Regardless, you need to get more out of Dylan, Co Dylan Cousins. You need to get more out of Peyton Krebs. You need to get more out of even Tage Thompson. J.J. Paterka's got another level he could reach. Jack Quinn, get him healthy. You know, as much as, you know, Quinn had success under Granado, Quinn and Appert, like that... Relationships matter. And we heard throughout that the 2001-2002 season when Quinn was the top rookie in the American Hockey League, how that 
relationship with Appert really pushed him. You know, they would argue at times. You know, they would push each other. Like, they would be yelling at each other. Like, Appert knows you can't coach everybody the same way. I think that he has those intangibles that you look for to add to your staff. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, we'll see if they add anybody else at this point. The Rochester hire is pivotal to this organization's success. They have to get it right. I would even encourage them to try to bring to try to have continuity. Keep Nathan Pace on that staff. He's a good coach. He left the development staff to take that job at the Amherst, and I hope that they find a way to keep him on the staff there. Because if you're trying, you're talking about keeping culture, and and we heard Appert throughout the last four years understand what it meant to coach in that city for that fan base. Yeah, that may, may not matter in the grand scheme of things when we're talking about Sabres player development or success in Buffalo, but it does matter in terms of getting kids, and I'm talking kids, teenagers who come over from Russia, Sweden, all over the globe to buy in from day one. You know, and it takes a special person to do that, and I think Paige can help deliver that message. Vinny Prospel did a really nice job in a lot of ways. He moved in to coach the forwards in the power play after Michael Pekka departed for the New York Rangers. We'll see if he remains on staff. Seamus Kodak, the goalie development coach, not going anywhere based on all of his accomplishments. You look at Devin Levi, Uko Pekka and Scott Ratzloff at the Seattle Thunderbirds. They've done a really nice job drafting and development goalies over the years, so that's not changing. It's just, it's very difficult for me to describe it, but when you went to Rochester, let's pre-pandemic, before Appert, they were winning. They were getting into the playoffs. They had Victor Olsen, Rasmus Asplund as sort of the two younger guys in 2018-19 who were really making strides under Chris Taylor, then the head coach. But then when you see what happened after the pandemic and once Apper got his team together and once he got more prospects and really impressive. Really impressive. You saw it on a daily basis when you, whenever you went there. I just enjoyed making the, tra the drive to Rochester just to see how they practice, just to see how he interacts with his players, see what his players have to say about, about working with him and just trying to soak up as much as you can to learn more about him as a coach. And it's a great hire for the Sabres. There's other conversations to be had about should Ruff be able to hire other people? Will he be able to hire other people? What does he think about that? We'll hear from him at some point in the offseason, potentially closer to free agency, maybe after the fact, at, you know, after free agency at development camp. We'll see. But you know, by then, they'll probably have a, a coach for the Amherst. Until then, though, we know, at least for now, what the Sabres coaching staff looks like. I'm Lance Heisowski from the Buffalo News. Take care.